we saw your friend, his friend, Alex Jones, having to pay, I think first of all, it was a 4.5 compensatory damages amount, and now it's 45 million some other kind of damages, right? Then poor Pat Cipollone has to go testify to a grand jury because of a criminal investigation. It's not just the uh, congressional investigation, no more. So, you know, listen, you play, you pay. You've gotta be very, very careful about who you choose to work for because you don't wanna get dragged into any mess and you don't wanna end up with dead zones on your resume. But, you know, these were true believers, right? And it doesn't really matter that you were quote just following orders at a certain level you gotta you know gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them anyway this t-shirt is not cooperating with my bra but i thought i would hop on here because you know there's a lot of exciting very inexpensive makeup at the dollar store i did get a call to do a fitting at home earlier and I did I put some uh concealer on my face I don't know if it's still there because it was so hot um but yeah I thought maybe I'll play with some of these dollar store products I think the most important score was that I got hold of a blush some of these brands, Smoke and Mirrors, right? Smoke and Mirrors has a very basic kind of cherry rose colored blush. And of course, you know, I'd gotten hold of some brow products and some eyeshadows and whatnot. I was able to get my hands on a very dark shade of the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. Maybe try that for underpainting. Then I also got hold of the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder in the shade Medium. I know that there's a shade Medium Light, but as you can tell, it's very difficult to get your hands on these products in store. In any case, how's everything with you? How's your, how's your weekend? You know, I got a message in the afternoon that I, you know, kind of had to report to set camera ready, dressed, you know, make up everything ready to go Monday morning. So I had to do a virtual fitting, which is not unusual these days. You know, you kind of would rather get it done from, you know, digitally from the comfort of your home than like having to actually go somewhere for it. But I'm going to guess that, you know, sometimes people act up over things. And yes, contractually... Probably, you know, that's probably not what we're supposed to do, but, you know, whatever, whatever works for production is probably a good thing. This is a Revolution Pro Blur Stick. Just trying this out. There's one that's like a, I guess it's a more luminous one, but it really does kind of tug at your skin. I mean, it's hot. It's nighttime, but it's still kind of warm. I still have some glitter somehow on my face from the uh, <laughs> inexpensive dollar store eyeshadow I tried the other day. But, you know, I have high hopes for this blur stick. It has a little skin-colored tint to it, and it really does seem to mattify. It does make me curious about what the luminous one looks like. And as a face primer... Is this supposed to make your makeup stick better or is it just supposed to blur? It's unclear, right? But I know that some of the creamier blur products that I've used aren't really very satisfying. I feel like this does give a, a blur and a grippiness without, you know, coming in a pot like some of these other putty primer products. So if we have this on, Maybe, we, maybe it's time to get into this product and do a little underpainting. We tried to do it the other day. We were on our way to the gym, so I don't really know that we did a 
significant job of it. I have a few products. I think Gigi Hadid had had a, an underpainting product that, what is this? Medium deep, it's a tinted primer. And when you read the directions, right? It is a collab with Maybelline New York, tinted primer for medium to deep skin tones. Gigi shares her secret weapon for her perfected, freshly contoured face. Use a tinted primer that's at least two shades darker than your foundation. Apply this light, lightweight tinted base to contour before applying foundation. If it's good enough for Gigi, should we do a brush or our favorite squishy sponge? Hmm. But again, like people say, use the, the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter as an underpainting element as well. This comes with a doe foot, a giant doe foot, right? If it's, that's my thumb, that's the doe foot. It's big, right? I don't know about putting doe foot directly on the face. All right, so let's try a tiny amount and rock out, right? It's Friday. Some people are out partying, risking monkey pox. Do I need a filter? Hey, wow, uh-oh, hmm, you know, I don't know why people would want, <laughs> look at this, eight millimeter, like it's a snuff film, glamour, uh-uh, that seems to have taken light, crush, glow, I don't know if it delivers glow, pop, how about that, here we go. Anyway, this is it in the dish. Getting it onto our little spongy sponge. So what else is going on? You know, I, I, I very casually have been paying attention to this business with, you know, Alex Jones and Pat Cipollone and what, however long it's going to take people to actually get, to lay the paws on Donald Trump. I did ask a question of a, YouTube mobster, he was, seemed to suggest that, you know, Donald Trump had no association with the mob or the Russian mob outside of just, you know, needing construction work done. And I was like, well, you know, what about the whole theory of where he got the money, right? After American banks wouldn't lend to him anymore, there've been some documentaries produced in Europe about, it was, you know, Russian oligarchs that have poor Brittany Griner over there in a cell for geopolitical reasons. I, I very much doubt that a basketball player with vape cartridges is really going to have a serious impact on drug policy abroad. Just send her home. But, you know, it's grandstanding. People are saying that Putin is using a body double that has different ears. I don't know what's going on, you know. Poor thing. Just, you gotta be careful. I've gone to mainland China and, you know, your luggage is gonna get searched. You can't think, you can't be optimistic when you're abroad. You have to remember that you're in a, in a way, you're in a hostile place. You're in a hostile country that doesn't necessarily embrace you, even if you have an ability to earn there. So, you know, we gotta think about the ancestors and think about, you know, historically, whether people of different races are treated well abroad, right? Whatever happened to that young guy in was it North Korea where, you know, he's basically, shall we say, harmed? Um, it just, it kind of doesn't make sense. Only in, it only makes sense because you think, oh, I'm a tourist or, oh, I'm, you know, I'm here for a particular job. But that doesn't mean that that country doesn't want to take advantage of you know, being able to put their hands on you and make an example of you, even if they can't really do bigger things 
on a geopolitical level, right? Sometimes you're just the local patsy. Um, but yeah, no, we were, <laughs> we were in mainland China. They warned us, this is not the time or the place for grandstanding. Don't think you're going to go into authoritarian countries and do things your way. It's just not going to work out as we see. So this is my very quick and dirty application of a very small amount of this elf. What is it called again? Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I don't know if I'm getting glow. I definitely am getting warm and this is the shade eight rich which is the deepest shade I mean it's definitely gone to the places where it needed to go maybe a little bit in the eyelid area I don't know I feel like for the color I like for my underpainting I really am enjoying the Revolution Pro bronzer where has it gone here Revolution, Makeup Revolution London, cream bronzer in the shade medium. So maybe we can go in with that at a later stage as well. Um, but yeah, you know, poor thing. Can you imagine being in jail in Russia? Food must be terrible. Never mind not being able to enjoy, you know, relaxing substances over there. Just and your LGBT trying to be in prison in Russia. Ugh, don't we have any prisoners we can trade and just get her home? I know, I know it's something about money that, you know, American women basketball players, and I think most basketball players at a certain level make more money playing abroad. I didn't even know Russia had basketball, but I'm not the big basketball person, you know. Maybe it's just better to be at home, like being a coach or something. I don't know. But, you know, no one's seeking to have problems of that sort. And it's unfortunate, you know, that they got their hands on her. But, you know, you have to have the attitude when you go abroad, especially as a tourist, especially to places that have, you may think you're apolitical. They don't see you as apolitical. They may not agree with your lifestyle. They may not agree with your everything about you, you know, and, and you think that you have freedoms and that you don't have to, you know, live, live for other people's approval. And they want to, you know, they, like going into a sundown town, like they want to make an example out of you. And pff, I don't know, you know. Donald Trump saying stuff pro-Russia about, you know, they got their hands on an American. I, I don't know. I don't like it. But, you know, we've known for various reasons that, you know, Donald Trump is a little bit of a turncoat, a lot of bit of a turncoat when it comes to, you know, the people who are funding his business, you know. How many different kinds of businesses has he busted out? From real estate to his own company to whatever happened with all those casinos. Even I have been to Atlantic City. Atlantic City is, from what I understand, it's, a, it's urban blight. It's not in any way. This is this very pale shade of, 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 of Maybelline. Superstay Activewear Concealer in the shade 05, which is very, very pale. We need to put a bright stripe down the middle of our nose. Maybe get something under our um, eyes for underpainting. That's what we're doing. We're not being cheap with it either. Right? Under the eyes. It couldn't possibly be brighter or whiter. Or could it? I guess if this is shade 05 suggests that there's a shade 04, 03, and 01, theoretically. Late night makeup application, right? Let's think of ourselves 
as a stage performer. Although, you know, Monday's makeup will be, I guess, more tried and true because I think we have to be a cop at some point. It's never clear. I have heard that, you know, this season people have had to change two and three times. So, you know, we want to anticipate that and make the best of it. Right? If this is the contour and highlight, we could put more on the jaw just to see, you know, those transitions and reveals where people put so much makeup on and it looks really scary and you don't know how it's going to work out. And then in a moment, voila, it just looks incredible, right? Is that because the underpainting worked out? Or are, again, my you know my question, are these just gimmicky tricks and people, you know, draw a big circle around their, <laughs> they draw a big circle around their mouths, big brown circle around the mouth, and then the makeup doesn't end up looking anything like that. I call fraud. I don't think that, I don't think that looks convincing at all, but it makes a dramatic transition, and maybe that's what people are looking for transitions and drama even though you know you're telling a lie about your process right a bright jaw contour a bright jaw and then some contour you know people say a line here and a line there can give lift well maybe we're ready for our foundation step what foundation shall it be? If we've underpainted with something glowy, I'm not sure that we're getting glow on the, uh, video screen. This is us underpainted, right? Do we underpaint blush as well? We did get this exciting Milani Coral Crush Cheek Kiss. I can't tell if I already have this color, but when I see something that seems like it's for me, I grab it. So this is what it looks like. It's a cream blush. Digging in with our same sponge. I don't know if this is the right applicator for this. It doesn't really seem to take to lift product out. We need a brush of some kind, maybe. Should we use a clean brush? So many questions. Maybe if we hold this a little bit stiffer. All our all our silicone sponge did was like swirl without getting any product off. So, ooh, that's pigmented. I didn't expect that. But maybe that's the kind of significant blush we need to show through our foundation, right? I have seen people put their blush on, yes, that high, and that much saturated color, right? Not being cheap with it on the nose, right? They want it all the way up to the eye. That's the trend to make you look like you've been running in a field and playing, you know, ultimate Frisbee or something. Little chin, little forehead, Right, if this is the secret that Gigi Hadid has to looking underpainted and snatched, we're gonna we're gonna take hold of the secret. <laughs> Here we go. So Milani Coral, right? We're very yellow orange, so things with a little bit of orange in it, like a coral, will cancel out and look more pink on us, right? We're also doing our makeup at night, so maybe we can't see everything. Now, I am curious whether any of these stick foundations would apply over underpainting. I'm not sure that they would. So we do need to go in with something of a liquid, a liquid of some kind. What shall it be? Hmm, we did enjoy this the other day, this infallible fresh wear in the shade, 475 Sun Beige. 
right? We also got hold of an interesting product. It's a custom enhancer drop from Cover Effects in the shade Halo. I don't know if Halo is gonna look great on our skin. Should we use this foundation? We have many a foundation. We have our favorite foundation and some other stuff. Let's work with this one. We could also use a little MAC. MAC Studio Fix or this. Let's rock with this because this one's a little bit warmer and maybe more accurate for our skin tone. But what we're wanting is these underpainting colors, this bright white, this very, you know, obvious kind of blush color. Are we going to look sunburned? We want to pat this over and have the underpainting kind of show through as a layer. People have been talking smack about layering products and having too much product on the face. I don't tend to be a thick application person, but I am trying to get what we call enough, right? Just like people at work ask me, how many wigs do I have? And I say enough. I want to have, you know, the sense that I am using enough makeup, right? Just taking off whatever's left on our sponge on the back of our hand. We put some on our lips, right? Is that the right placement? I had been putting these kind of lines of uh, contour a little bit too far forward I kind of took them back to an extent and I you know I could drag my jaw contour up a bit right up a bit let's see let's see if we can get this foundation on in a way that's credible so if we get it on to our sponge we get our beloved hand mirror and we put that on our face, right? We don't want to lift what's under, but we do want to cover everything with a unifying tone, right? We want to get something that creates a sense of unity of color. So we paint over our underpainting and get get our face together. Not to cancel it, but to utilize those underpainting layers to give us a unified look of having a face that perhaps all has all these shades in it naturally. Someone outside is smoking some very powerful marijuana. <laughs> I tell you, California, and I can't really say it's not a bad thing to have access to substances. I do think it suggests something bad to need so much substance all the time, every day, all night. What is it that you're running away from in your life, right? Is it, you know, you smoke that much weed, you're going to eat yourself out of house and home. And at the end of it, you're going to be eating things that you shouldn't eat. You're going to eat more than you should. So if this is one layer, right, we could perhaps use more coverage here and here. But I kind of like the fact that the, that the underpainting is still showing through. You see that brighter jaw. You see the contour line here, right? We've successfully unified the colors on the nose and the temptation is great to slap on way more foundation but maybe this is okay right if i were going to walk onto set having this series of colors on my face sometimes i get very ambitious and i'll be like happy that i get away with my <laughs> contouring because it doesn't look natural you know we get these notes that say, you know, must have natural, must have controlled, you know, 
kind of cop hair, must have natural looking makeup. And not everybody does the natural looking makeup, right? But if you get your foundation and other colors on and you're still in the family of colors that work with your neck and your hands and, you know, the underside of your arm that doesn't really tan that much, but you see all those tones kind of interplaying. Maybe your face is a little bit more ruddy than it is naturally. You're in the game, right? Do you need to enhance anything with more bronzer? More blush, right? I do find that when I am at work, and even when I'm on camera here at the Sky Cabana, I do feel like sometimes my blush doesn't show as much as I want it to, that I'll just have a very um, discreet application and I could always wear more, right? I don't necessarily do it in normal life, but you know, part of being, <laughs> part of being a, I don't know what you call it. Would you call it being mm, on television? I won't call it being a star per se, but part of being on television is to, you know, have a consciousness about what you look like and what a particular role calls for. A little gentle addition of more contour just on the tip of this angled brush just to bring out that cheekbone and the angle of that cheekbone I really can't tell you how much I really enjoy this bronzer it's a cream bronzer it's not those little elf pots but it just it just seems cool enough that it gives me some credible contour action, right? Contour action where, you know, as you lose weight and see more of the actual muscles and definition in your face, you're just wanting to use your makeup to enhance that, right? shrink that forehead using tones that might naturally occur under your chin under your brow etc right and then when you study other people's makeup you kind of see what they do and you kind of you know take cues from it bronzer on the lid maybe a little bit of bronzer to enhance the nose contour. I did see some people on TikTok draw a very interesting diagram of contouring what they called a wide nose. So they take the contour down the nose and make a little tiny L, a mirror image on the other side. Again, that button nose thing. Looks glowy smells good in a subtle way I'm trying to disguise the double chin drag it down onto the neck more forehead contouring for that tiny forehead should we put a little under the lip to suggest what the brown lip circles look like <laughs> I just can't get, I can't understand what a brown line on top of your lip is going to do. What shadow is falling on top of your lip unless it's a mustache? Anyway, we're experimenting. It's a Friday night. You know, we could be somewhere risking some kind of infection, but we're not. We're here safe, here in the studio, <laughs> experimenting with dollar store makeup oh no we forgot to use our dollar store cream blush there's always tomorrow look at this psychedelic packaging and it's not difficult to open either what it does come with is a 
warning. There's like a warning on all this makeup. You can't really read it, but it's this cancer and reproductive harm warning that's on absolutely everything, practically, here in here in California. It's on the inside of vehicles. It's, you know, it's very instructive in the sense, so we've got brow pencil and we've got auto eyeliner. We've got lip oils, smoky eyeshadow palette. I think we have a another eye we have another eyeshadow palette. You know, there's no reason to not have makeup. I have actually been I've had makeup people insist that I give makeup to other people who came to set without makeup. That's how serious it is, right? They don't either because of health reasons, they don't want to do it themselves. It's not part of their negotiation with producers. We don't know. We're just trying to we're trying to get through the business. We're just trying to show up and show out doing our little job and run along, but you know, whether it's people who are young or I don't know if it's young or if it's just lazy, right? Even men won't show up with anything to take out shine if they have like bald heads or here's a love nudes palette from Uncommon Cosmetics. Look at that, look at that gold shimmer. It's kind of nuts for a nude, but Uncommon Cosmetics Love Nudes eyeshadow palette has everything you need to achieve the perfect eye looks. Silky smooth texture can be used as a liner on the lid and in the crease of the eye for an expertly contoured and blending effect. Apply a light shadow over your lids and around the outer corners of your eyes. Next, apply a medium shade in your crease, then apply your dark eyeshadow to the outer corner of your eyes. And it doesn't mention what to do with this perfectly delicious gold glitter. So let's get busy. You know, if we're contoured and we're blushed, we're not powdered, then it's time to get on some, mm, always so hard to open these little palettes. I need like a crowbar. Luckily I have my little kit for Manny Petty. And there will be something in here that I can use. Pry this open. Mm -hmm. Yep. The little cuticle pusher thingy. And then we get that back into our little case. We do try to be organized here at the makeup atelier. And I hope our focus is on our face. Mm hmm So, we got hold of some minted cosmetic slip liners, and we will be experimenting with those at another time. But right now, we just need some kind of brush to get on our basic, eh, basic, <laughs> we did get this brush. We got a little palette and we took the brush out and washed it, but it does seem to have like quite a perfect little pair of brushes on it. This is a Beauty Creations, which is a, I think it's a Latina owned brand, but we're gonna use the brush with this dollar store. It was a dollar, probably 99 cents or a dollar 30 for this little palette, right? So if we use the palest shade, we're gonna see what it does on our skin tone. Then we're gonna add an eyeliner and then get to our brows. It doesn't really work for me to do my brows first because then there's mayhem anyway. And I don't find it helpful to do small circles. I try to pat and build out, you know, we're just trying to prime the lid. We put on that cream bronzer and now we're gonna set it with this very pale shade of powder. You know, you think about the old times. You think about whether it's the early 2000s or the 70s where people would just go in with a, with a fairly awful shade of powdery blue and then call that 
makeup. I only know that because recently I did some drug dealer biopic that was set in the 80s and the it was some of the <laughs> ugliest makeup I've seen on my face in all my years on set. I was not happy. And it's interesting because this palest shade is coming out looking more saturated and more of like a color. I feel like just having, again, single shade on my lids looks, it looks like my lids are more dressed than they are, that I've done more than I did just by having a single shade. And I think that, you know, I do see people just putting bronzer on and then a paler shade on their uh, actual lid. And I think that that can look conservative and like, you know, like you've just done a basic face without doing too much. So dare I use the same brush to take the other matte shade? I think I dare. Could use a smaller brush. Well, let's let's see let's see what we can do just using the edge of this brush. So this is the darkest shade there is that isn't a shimmer, right? So thinking about the outer corner and the crease, and it's sort of like a purpley mauve shade. You know, in these challenging days and times, it's important to inform yourself, right? I've been reading and watching videos and TikToks about people, unfortunately, getting the monkeypox, right? Saying that they're not getting it from any kind of intimate contact, but just from handling money at their cashier job. And there's definitely been video of people, uh, women in New York and Atlanta, saying, oh, they went to a concert, that's how they got it. Oh, they went, uh, you know, to their cashier job. No one who's female is saying that they got it from intimate contact. And I hope that, you know, in a way you hope that that's true, that what they're saying is true, but in a way it's, it's disturbing if it is so contagious that you can get it one woman said she was, you know, changing money from a, a customer at her job that was homeless. Well, then where is the homeless man or woman who has monkeypox? Like, I would imagine with a, a significant infection like this, there would be health department contact tracing to follow, you know, follow up and find that person. But I haven't heard any discussion that they found you know, a customer who had it, or maybe that person disappeared back onto the streets. But I imagine that everybody homeless or housed or not is aware of what this is and does not want it because it looks, in the States, it so far hasn't been, what is the word? It hasn't caused fatalities, but it looks scarring and uncomfortable. There have been, you know, hospital stays and there's a vaccine and in some places you can only get the vaccine if you're currently taking PEP or PrEP, you know, I'll try not to explain what that's for in case that's a sensitive subject here on. I, I do see that this base is quite glowy. I look, I look moist which is quite a feat here in Southern California because it can be quite dry here. So if we take the less shimmery shimmer and see if we can use the other end of this brush to get it on the inner third of the eye, maybe we'll, you know, leave the gold for a different moment. So looking down into our mirror, patting that on, the inner corner. So it, it in the pan, it looks sort of brown and kind of, mm, not silver, but like kind of like a pewter. But on the lid, it looks more pink. I don't hate it. I mean, listen, for a dollar, 
you're not going to show up at work being demanded to be made up barefaced. And we see that a lot. And people defy instructions. They show up to be upscale in Beverly Hills with no makeup on and no jewelry. And then they're salty if, you know, Charlize Theron or some, you know, important producer doesn't select them to be featured in a scene, right? But they make little to no effort. Let's not even talk about fitness and nutrition. Let's, let's, let's leave that aside. But, you know, people just really have this mentality that they should just show up and win automatically. And maybe that's how it was for them, I guess, back in the day. But I don't hate this eyeshadow. It does seem like this inner corner shimmer is a little bit more pink than a neutral. But it's not out of the ballpark tone-wise of these hues. So should we kiss a little of this crazy yellow gold and see what we're working with? It does seem very emollient, like a very wet kind of glitter. And these dollar store glitters are no joke. These glitters are gonna hang around for a few days, for sure. But that's pretty, it's a, like a little, it's a little yellow gold surprise, just at the innermost most corner. And you, you just try to be very precise with it and not get it everywhere because it will dance itself all over the place. I like it. I haven't I haven't been disappointed by any of these dollar store um, makeup products. I haven't been like, ugh, trash, I should throw it away. Um, you know, I don't know what their formulas for lip oils and whatnot are vis-a-vis -vis the most expensive ones, but I haven't been I haven't been sad. I mean look at this, look at this highlighter. They are very hard to open though. <laughs> That is undeniable. I think I need to keep a tool out for dealing with this. But look at this. Wow. Doesn't have shade names, but obviously it's kind of a, a bluish white. I don't even know if you'd call it a silver. And then the other one is gold. We're going to get into that. But right now, let's try to get busy with this soft brown skinny brow pencil black brown auto eyeliner. I guess we should rock with the eyeliner first. Why not? It's Friday night. We're getting busy here. I hope this is focusing on my face and not on what's behind me. It's my struggle. I, I actually took a break and I was watching TikTok and I was wondering if I had the energy. No sharpening needed, automatic eyeliner. Specially formulated for long-lasting wear. Twist and draw a line from inner to outer corner of the lid. It's mostly wax, coconut oil, blase, blase. This, that, and the third. I'm just trying to show you, you know, there's no reason to not have makeup since we are female presenting actors and we are required to have... This eyeshadow is not half bad. I don't even need, I don't even know if I need these shimmers, but any, in any case, let's see what's going on with this eyeliner. It lays down pretty, pretty credibly, right? Let's think about a doe eye. And that's the thing. We can't go crazy with a lot of wingage, right? On a day where we have to spend some part of the day being a cop, all these different eyeshadow colors are not going to work if we have to be something and then be a cop we can't we can't have all this eyeshadow right you gotta like look at main cast main cast has the most beautiful undetectable makeup you can tell that there's makeup on but it's not like makeup with like you know what kills me is like people at work wearing very thick I'm sorry, I'm getting it in the inner corner. 
they're wearing very, very thick liquid liner, like a quarter inch of liquid liner above the lash line. It's like, have you ever seen a cop in real life who wasn't undercover and testifying in court wearing crazy acrylic nails or you know, lipstick that looks like lipstick or winged eyeliner that looks like winged eyeliner. It just, it's very unrealistic, but you know, some people really refuse to not be glamorous. They really still want red nails. Week after week, they gotta have red nails. I had to change the batteries in this mirror. I don't hate this eyeliner. I think it's a very nice, very cool, conservative color, right? That right out of the package, it glides on well. You could make it thicker if you wanted. You can also tight line. Right? You could get it on the lower lash line for added definition, but just a wing that kind of extends out from the lower lash line, extends out from the inner corner, and gives you definition in a color that is credible, right? Not some big old crazy wing, but enough of a wing so that you look like you've enhanced your natural features, plain, lined, right? Other side. If we orient the inner corner flick from the upper lash line, that might be a better shape for us. Just a little tiny triangle favoring the top of the eye. And then other side is dragging out a wing not too lifted and not too long. Just something to give us some lash line, some lash line depth and a color that's black brown. I really appreciate these dollar store makeups because you know, sometimes you don't wanna bring like your Fenty or your Lemur or waste it at work because at work you don't really need to look made up. You need to look kind of basic. So skincare is important. Maybe some dark brown, definitely not black. Something that just looks a little bit thicker of a lash line and kind of undetectable for me is ideal because you just don't want to look, you don't want it to be too much, right? I say yes to this LA Colors Auto Eyeliner. I think that this is a terrific shade. It looks even. It applies comfortably. It could be sharper in the inner corner, but it's a pencil. So, you know, what can you expect from a pencil? I had an epiphany. I thought, ah, what if I use setting spray instead of water with this Makeup Revolution frustrating <laughs> soap brow, right? Let's see. We have some finishing spray. We have another finishing spray. But I thought to myself, maybe setting spray would, would set it off. Maybe that'll give us the oomph we've been lacking. Rainforest of the Sea, four-in-one setting mist from Tarte. We spray it. onto our little disappointing soap brow. We do still have our e.l.f. soap brow. Let's just see if this makes any difference. Our, our caked up brush, let's see. And then brush our brows heavenward, right? We could also use the got to be gel, but there's just something about this product that just doesn't deliver the stiffness that I like, and I thought maybe setting spray will give it a little more than water. And then we can go in with our pencil. We have two different brow pencils. 
and see if we can get any joy from filling out and making more of a horizontal, you know, gesture to our brow. But definitely brushing up, definitely not wanting to get like too much. You know, I've been really thinking about this whole setting spray, alcohol spraying on the face. Is it really necessary to do it? I know that there are days that are hot where I have to work outside. I've been trying to up my ice pack game. I got some, you know, lunchbox ice packs that are flexible and gel and they do stay cold longer than my plastic surgery, um, my plastic surgery ice packs. So that's definitely a plus. You know, rainforest of the sea, not terrible. It's not giving us nothing, but it just looks so much more satisfying when people do their brows and kind of push them into their face like this. I say, you know, really laminate them and set them down flat. And then once it dries, then you can use your next product to draw in any, you know, sparse areas. So is this working better with the setting spray as opposed to water? Maybe, but then, you know, it's kind of sad how the little brush looks so gummy and nasty. I don't know if you're supposed to wash it or what, but we try, we watch the tutorials. We see what amount of product people lay down and I think the drying step is definitely an important one. How's that? I think it, it's also odd to see how glowy my face looks. Is this a glow foundation? Infallible fresh wear. Breathable texture up to 24 hours wow when you really don't want people to see your bare face it doesn't say matte so maybe it's like a satin finish on top of that glowy underpainting and then we got our um cream bronzer on do we need more blush are we blushed enough is our eyeshadow we did not use a fluffy brush and blend out our eyeshadow do we need to? I'm not sure. Maybe it's time for a lip liner as we let our brows dry down. Look at this exciting highlighter. Wow. Um, 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 let's see. Here's that dollar store lip liner. Well, it's actually, I think this is a dollar store eyeliner. And we used it as a lip liner the last time and we really liked it. So let's do that again, right? I heard people talk about oval lining their lips. You press your lips together and draw an oval, watch. Right in the center. Does that make sense? Oval. And then just follow your natural lip line on the sides and fill it in, right? It's a slightly brown, slightly taupe, right? Giving you that kind of fat rounded shape in the middle, elliptical. And then you can fill it in if you like. But that line that joins the two kind of middle hills of your lips, it definitely makes your lips look bigger. I'm not sure if I need this technique, but this is the technique, the oval. Press the lips together. Draw an oval in the center and then follow your natural lip line on the sides. 
What kind of lip color do we want tonight? Do we want clear? Do we want Madison beer? Do we want Keep It Full by Milani? What's appropriate? Do we want one of these Superstay Ink Jobbies? This is the one, Keep It Fun. It's fun doing makeup. I actually like it. I mean, I I like to do enough that it'll be successful. When I want it to look a certain way, that I've done enough to figure it out before game time, right? You wanna go to practice, practice your plays, I don't know if overlining my lips is for me. It looks suspicious. <laughs> Some people really like it. And you know, I see all these people like, oh, it looks like I got a lip, I got lip filler and I don't know. I don't know if I like this look on me, but this is the technique. You know, just trying to pat the lip liner together with the lip color. Sharpen up the edges. Maybe wipe my finger off on this beauty sponge. I guess that's right. I should bring like a towel into my beauty area. I think that should be a good thing. Lips look full. We can certainly get into one of our, our mattifying or dollar store powders because Lord knows we have a few different colors. We've got nude. That way we don't have to be concerned about going too dark. Just to take down this glowiness in the middle of our face, like around the nose. That isn't kind of what we want. We don't want a glowy nose. And you see how instantly that just makes it look more like an expert makeup application, right? Suspicious of the sponge. I heard um, Bethany, <laughs> the New York housewife, reviewing makeup quickly in her routine. I think she's traveling maybe in the Hamptons. I'm not sure, but you know, she talks about whether makeup is at the level or below the level. I feel like this dollar store makeup and this powder they're definitely at the level for what I need, right? When it's important, then the hair and makeup team will come visit you. But I think it's nice, especially in these times of contagion, to be able to do a good enough job that they just look at you and approve you and keep it moving. That you don't need to, I, I just, I shouldn't say this, but I just wonder why certain people continue to come to a cop job, right? Having to, with a plan to do cop scenes and they refuse to do their hair. It's not a confusing hairstyle. Put your hair in a ponytail, twist it and make a bun. That's all you have to do. They refuse to do it. And I, I do know, I do believe that some of them just like they just like the attention of sitting in the hair and makeup trailer and on in that chair. And I don't think that this is the time for that. This is not sit in the makeup chair time. This is, things are getting serious again. Here's the NYX lingerie gloss clear. So, you know, we lined with our brown eyeliner, brown taupey eyeliner from that, what is it called? Something Hovenace? Rosas Hovenace by Elite Pro Beauty. A dollar, a dollar thirty. Oh yes. Get that on in the oval shape. Lips look full and plump. Look at that contour, right? The line going across the cheekbone and down. Suggesting a slimmer face. Suggesting no double chin. 
a little gloss moment, right? Peel off the little wrapper. Yup. We can never wear gloss as a cop. <laughs> and then, you know, I wonder things like, I'm gonna get this maybe on my fingernail so I don't paint, I don't put lip color inside this gloss itself, but I can just use my fingernail. This is my innovation, fingernail, not finger. Get on the center of the lip. This has a very nice scent. It's almost like peppermint, but not quite. That feels nice. It looks nice. Lips look fat and healthy. I heard someone complaining that someone told her, a guy that she met, you know, online dating or something like that, complained that her lips were wrinkly, that she had actual, like, you know, kind of lines in her lips because her lips weren't plumped out with filler because that's how common filler is in LA that now it looks more normal for people's lips to be plumped and stretched and protruding like that as opposed to you know having a naturally um full lip <laughs> it's so crazy but you know I am told it's like 80 percent of people on set so the eyeliner is good very decent for this price and this is the skinny brow pencil in soft brown right our brows are quite black but I don't think you want to go as dark as your brows you want to use something that is a little bit lighter or at least experiment there before you go black it's like using black eyeliner you can but then you're gonna end up looking more makeup-y. So this is Skinny Brow Pencil. And it's little. It's about the size of the, um, what do you call it? Daiso Brow Products. Now, over all our different products, will we get color payoff? That is the question. And it feels a little unsatisfying, right? What we want to do, I feel like I'm bruising my face. What we want to do is do enough to fill in sparse areas. I mean, I guess my dream of having symmetrical brows will just never come true, but we want to use this pencil theoretically to make our brows look longer and it's not giving for that either. <laughs> So maybe this is going to be another product that becomes a, a lip liner. Who's to say? Because it's not really giving us satisfying color or stroke. It gives more of a shadow. This product might be good for nose contour, right? I've seen some Asian women on TikTok because of it being a cool brown really using a thin pencil like this to draw contour lines right you can barely see them but maybe that's the point you don't want a big old fat line you want a line that is thin and cool and then this tutorial then makes a little 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 mirror L shapes right and that that suggests the I guess the button nose this is how you're supposed to thin or structure what they call a wide nose I don't know if my nose is wide or if it's just that I'm the ethnicity that I am but I do see how that lower V kind of shading and extending the nostrils does make my nose look sort of upturned. Do you see what I'm saying? Experiments, right? Making that nose tip somehow smaller. 
that kind of actually did, did kind of work. I don't think it gets rid of my nostrils, right? You could add more concealer or whatever to the sides, but just drawing this looks like a little bit of a penis on my my nose. I don't know about straight lines across. I wonder if these lines should go down. Kind of like a diamond shape on the nose. But yeah, so this pencil, it does actually suggest a different structure of my nose. I, I'm not mad, but it definitely doesn't do much as a brow pencil. Like over here, you can see the kind of shadow of lines that I tried to draw, but it looks more like a smudge than like hairs. So lift and snatch may be better, but this might be an okay, the brow pencil in whatever shade that was, brown, soft brown maybe, might be good for nose contour because then once it's on, you can just use a warm finger to pat that in, right? pat it in and this to me makes a lot more sense because it's a cool tone kind of gray right this makes more sense to me for contour and it doesn't create a whole sheath of warm brown all over your nose because people are out here I'm sorry just looking goofy and just make sure to drag that color up and connect it to your brows but it does right contour 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 and then contoured nose i'm not mad i should be using the back camera though i'm you know i'm to blame this lip gloss is not i'm not against this lip gloss i'm a, i might even do my hair you know there's a lot going on there's a lot to do making all these posts definitely takes a lot more time <laughs> than I would like it to. Here's our same old brush. What shall it be? Should it be the pale shade or the darker shade? Let's rock with the pale one using the tip of our brush. Maybe the side of our brush. Let's try the pale shade, right? Get that on the brush. Let's look in a mirror instead of in the tiny viewfinder. I don't hate this eyeliner. I don't hate this eyeshadow. I'm seeing shimmer. We powdered the center of the face. Now we're gonna see what this dollar store highlighter has to say. All right, getting that on the cheekbone. I don't think that's terrible. For a dollar, right? Getting it above the arch of the brow. It looks glowy. I mean, it's not chunky. It's not the finest ever but you know if I were going to Gelson's or Bristol Farms if I was afraid that ooh, will the paparazzi catch me do I need to have a little something on my face down the bridge of the nose on the tip of the nose on the cupid's bow just to give them that, you know how people say, you know, it girls don't go out where they might be photographed without having something on, right? And this is the this is the lie of makeup, right? You put that highlighter where you want things to look more prominent, right? Making my chin wider. I'm not saying it looks realistic. It definitely looks like makeup. But is that makeup doing the job that I need it to do, right? When there's no rules, when I'm not a cop, when I can just do what I want, right? Dollar store or no. Bringing out that very weak nose bridge of mine and creating some glowiness. I don't hate it. Let's use the other side of this brush and mess with this gold. We're just trying to see what this dollar store makeup has for us. And it's saying it has a lot. Let's get this on the brush, right? Let's get it on there. Highlight. That definitely creates some warmth. I don't know if we like this better 
than we like the other shade, but I think it's thoughtful that they have shades that can work for lighter and darker skin tones, even within the same palette, right? Maybe you got a tan, maybe on vacation, maybe one is a daytime shade, maybe one is for night. Maybe you want to mix the two, right? Maybe you don't have to break the bank to be high lit. Right, when you move around, you can see how much more dimension and how much more pop you have to your cheekbone, right? If you think about where the height of your camera is, maybe it looks better when you're lower down. Maybe too much high layer up here is not good, but it's fine back here, right? In the old days, they said, just make it like a C shape, right? around the eye, above that brow arch, onto that cheekbone, maybe a little bit on the brow bone, a little on the nose, a little bit, a little bit, maybe a tinier brush. But for a dollar twenty-nine, a dollar ninety-nine cents, this is not terrible. There is, I hate to say it this way, there really is no excuse to not have basic makeup, basic makeup, right? basic, is it a brow pencil or is it contour, right? Why not? Why not have a little something? An eyeliner that could be a lip liner, right? In a pinch, why not? It's a dollar, right? And there's more dollar makeup to explore. We have a whole pouch full of Lip oil, right? Infused with cherry and vitamin E. Keeps lips soft and plump, hydrates, and replenishes cherry. Another eyeshadow palette. Forever smoky. For that special night out. <laughs> Maybe not so special. Here's a retro palette with some pinks and shimmers in it. Oh. You know, why, 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 why stop at a plain face, right? Juice infused lip oil, cherry, smoke and mirrors, another palette, quartz. You can't go wrong. You know, you can take this stuff right to set and, you know, grubby people who have not taken the time. You know, some people with their money, knowing that this is their job, they're not gonna invest in basic makeup. Never mind nicer makeup. Never mind finding a contour that's not orange or finding just the right finish of foundation. If matte is too powdery and, you know, shimmer is too shimmery, I've seen people turn up on set with a face full of glow makeup, and it just is too much. It's like wearing the glotion all by itself. Wow, that's too much. I'm sure it looks exciting in the mirror, but it doesn't look realistic. They don't take the time to experiment with the makeup. They don't, you know, let's not even talk about like, just, you know, jewelry and, and, and just shoe options and all this stuff. Never mind like fitness and weight and all that stuff. There's so many dimensions to being a visual performer, right? Some people make no effort. And, you know, if you see my TikToks, you know, this Amber Heard who spent so much time and energy, allegedly super happy adult fun time parties, making connections with, you know, married directors and that sort of thing. Where are the audition tapes? Where are the, um, where's the acting class? Where are the guest star, co-star roles? Where is the building a body of work? Even now, not auditioning in Tel Aviv. What? what? Where's the, you got, you got a lot of millions to pay, right? International travel, it doesn't make sense. Um, 
I think the paler shade of this highlighter is better. This one looks more like a darker slash of uh, blush. I could take a beauty sponge and just tap that out so it doesn't look quite so dark, but it, it's a gold, which on my skin tone looks very, um, it's a very rich color and maybe too rich to work as a highlighter. But again, that's why we're experimenting. Something sheer or maybe optimally a blend of two parts this to one part this to get a tone that's somewhere between. But you know, the brows don't wanna stay. They just don't. I, you saw me, I, I brushed the business through them. I smashed them down. I rubbed a pencil through them and I just am losing lift. You know, if this is the look, if I'm supposed to have them skyward, right? Use the back of the brush to just press them down. Why won't they stay? Why won't they keep the same lifted angle? It looks exciting when you mash them down, but why won't they stay that way? Do I have to, what is it, spray hairspray on them? I'm glad I have enough brow to look fluffy, but the difficulty for me is the lack of symmetry and products that if I draw in hairs, it doesn't look like hairs, it just looks like smudges. But this nose is contoured. This face is contoured. For me personally, this much lip gloss is, it's a little come hither. It's not work appropriate, but. This is what we're working with. Dollar store makeup in combination with L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear. I highly recommend this shade. I recommend the Revolution Blur Stick. I think that that did us good and I think that our highlighting concealer did us good for underpainting. You know, emphasis. Eyeliner, eyeshadow, Maybe the shimmer is a little bit too much, but one or two shades together, I think that that looked, you know, I think that looked good. Maybe we've gone too far with all of our highlighting, but we definitely see what we're working with. We'll keep working on our brow game in real life, I would not wear this much gloss, but I'm not unhappy with what we've done tonight. We have made a credible exploration of yet another take on dollar store makeup. The complexion products aren't really there from what I've seen. You can get powder, you can get concealer, but you're not really gonna get a foundation there are bronzers, I believe. At least we have this other highlight palette. Um, and I've heard that there are good LA Colors blushes. I'm looking out for them. I've seen some TikToks, I haven't yet found them. But, you know, we could show up at brunch, we could show up at a 24 hour diner after the club. We're looking glowy. We're looking contoured. We're looking blushed. We've got a lot of lip gloss on. We haven't done eyeliner or lashes, but we don't tend to do eyeliner and lashes. You know, a little bit more conservatism with this inner corner flick. And we I think we look great. Ready to go. <laughs> In any case, that that's me. You know, check out my TikTok. 
uh, House of Tanya 2, I uh, was discussing some of the political news and our friend Amber Heard allegedly being involved in some adult type parties, making adult type connections and friends and perhaps building a protocol for filming and photographing people in compromising positions in an attempt at extortion and blackmail. These are what's being discussed on the internet. You know, there are some blogs, blog posts that have been produced that I think are worth looking at and thinking about in terms of how, you know, how does someone come from down south and over a number of years operate to the level of, you know, marrying a Johnny Depp and, you know, installing all these like friends and hangers on that may have come from this adult party scene why why is there so much making out with so many different people on the elevator it just doesn't make sense did you not want to get caught because it seemed like you did um and it's all social climbery people it's not the bagel delivery guy it's not the uber driver it's not the security guy it's all prominent known people and it, it feels like trading up trading up trading up and even now you know there's a suggestion that those stories may not have been a smear campaign by the ex-husband it may have been old girl herself trying to remind people that she has compromising images of perhaps allegedly that they need to step up and you know maybe pay her more than her house is worth maybe you know, fly her to Israel. Who's paying the bills? Anyway, it's worth looking into um, a mess, but entertaining and interesting all the same. And I will check you out on the next installation of Camera Ready here on House of Tanya. We gotta be ready. Cameras are gonna roll Monday morning. And we gotta, you know, prepare ourselves and I will see you on the next on the next installment all right be well have a great weekend bye